welcome to Light and Joy Designs, the Crochet Magical Mystery Tour, which is a year-long crochet along. Today I'm going to teach you how to make Tunisian brioche. And if you've ever seen knitted brioche, let me show you a sample here. What's cool about uh, knitted brioche is you see um, on one side one of the colors with a sneak peek of the other color. And then on the other side, you see the contrasting color with sneak peek of the, um, the main color. And we're able to create this same kind of effect with Tunisian crochet. There are several ways that you can create the brioche uh, look <clears throat> with Tunisian crochet and I'm going to show you two of them today. One is going to be using uh, Tunisian simple stitch into the top horizontal bar. That's this sample here. And you can see that similar to the knitting brioche, you have one of your colors primarily on, this, on one side with kind of a sneak peek of the other color and then the opposite on the other side. I'm also going to show you how to do it with full stitch. Um, as you can see, they're slightly different. With the full stitch, you have, it's a, it's a, a tighter fabric. You don't see as much. You don't have as much of the sneak peek unless you stretch it out. Um, and this is the other side. Both of these are stitches that are that are not using the vertical bars uh, as that we use in traditional Tunisian crochet stitches. And so with these two, we don't work into the end stitch. Here we have five other versions. of Tunisian brioche using stitches that go into the vertical bars. Uh, this one here actually also doesn't go into the vertical bars. This is using the back bump instead of the top horizontal bar. So you can see these are, these are somewhat similar. Um, it's just that this one has more open spaces. So it has a little bit of a lacier effect than this one is a, is a little denser. So that's using the back bump. And then these four over here are using our traditional stitches. This one is doing a brioche with the purl stitch. And with this one you're having these little bumps show up. Here it is with using Tunisian simple stitch where we go into the vertical bar. This is one side and this is the other side. And you can kind of compare that with the Tunisian simple stitch using the top horizontal bar. You can see how this becomes more stretched out and you can see more of the sneak peek here. Then we have one done in reverse stitch. And this is the other side. And then this sample here is done in knit stitch. And this one is very closely, um, very similar to the one done in full stitch. It has the same kind of dense um, density of fabric. The only difference is, is when you stretch it out, you can see with the knit stitch, you can see the knit stitches in there. And with the full stitches, um, the stitches are just, they have a different look. So you might want to try some of these different, these different versions here yourself. And I'm going to show you how to do them. So the formula is the same for all of them. Uh, there's just 
a couple of different variations. So let's take a look at that. In this series on Tunisian brioche, I'm going to show you several different ways to make a Tunisian brioche fabric. And also in this series, I'm going to be showing you how to use this stitch to make a cowl um, and also a very basic fingerless mitt as well as a more complex fingerless mitt that has a thumb on it. Let me show you how that looks. So this is the fingerless mitt with the, with the thumb. And then also I'm going to be showing you how to make this really cool Tunisian crochet reversible pom-pom hat. So this hat is fully reversible. And it has a pom-pom on both sides. Okay, and here it is with the brim turned up on this side. So these will be in um, different parts. Um, and if you're looking at any of the parts of this series, all the links to all the different parts of this series will be in the description below. And if you have a moment to please go ahead and like this video and all the rest of them, I really appreciate it and it helps me to continue to bring you more free videos and free patterns each week. Also be sure to subscribe and click the notify bell so that you'll be alerted each week when I come out with new patterns and video tutorials and also giveaways each month. So let's get started on learning Tunisian brioche. So I'm going to start by showing you how to do the Tunisian simple stitch top horizontal bar and also the Tunisian brioche using the full stitch. Uh, both of these do not use the, the front vertical, the front or the back vertical bars. And, um, and then I will show you just one of the ones that uses the vertical bars and then you'll be able to know how to uh, do it for any of the others. So let's get started. Let's start with the Tunisian Simple Stitch Top Horizontal Bar. The main difference between these two is the density of the fabric. So if we look at these from the side, this is the one in the top horizontal bar. You can see it's a, it's a thinner fabric and this one is thicker. And so what that means is if you're going to make a garment or an item using the full stitch version, you're going to need to do more rows uh, in order to create the same size fabric, unless you're really, you know, going to be using it stretched out. And conversely, if you're making it with Tunisian Simple Stitch in the top horizontal bar, you don't need to make as many rows to make the same size fabric. And it will be, this is going to be thinner, and this one is going to be thicker. So if you want, say, a a nice warm thick hat you might want to use this um, full stitch and if you want it you know if you were going to do it say with a sweater or something that you wanted to be lighter you could use the uh, top horizontal bar style the materials you'll need we always it's always good to have a measuring tape a scissors always need that a yarn needle for sewing in your ends and you'll be using two different colors I would suggest using a lighter color and a darker color so that you have that nice contrast between the two. And then you're going to need a double-ended Tunisian crochet hook. And today I'm using the uh, Denise Interchangeable Crochet Hooks. This is a uh, really wonderful set. It comes with uh, many different sizes from 3.75 millimeters all the way up to 15 millimeters. It has many uh, connector um, extender cords 
and these little stoppers for on the end if you're working with uh, just one end. I'll have a link to that below as well. I couldn't recommend these enough. Um, it is a, a little bit of an investment, but if you consider how much you have invested in your other crochet hooks, this is just an incredible investment. It's so worth it. Um, the quality is very high quality. Um, they, it's just very easy to crochet and with them and, and it's so nice how you can, um, just unlock them so easily to work with other sizes. So definitely take a look at those. Um, if you're going to be doing Tunisian crochet projects, this set is a, is a must. Okay, so let's get started. So for Tunisian brioche, the formula is always going to be the same. You're going to start with a chain of any number in your main color, color A. Your second row is going to be a forward pass where you pull up loops. And it's going to also be in color A, your same main color. With different styles of Tunisian brioche, sometimes you'll be pulling up those loops in uh, different parts of the stitch. Uh, but in the beginning, it's always best to pull them up in the back bumps, and I'll show you that when you're for your for your first starting row. The next row is going to be a reverse pass, but unlike regular Tunisian crochet, where we start our reverse pass where we finished the forward pass, we're actually going to slide all our stitches down to the end of our, of our double-ended hook and we're going to do the reverse pass from the other end. And we're going to do that with color B, our contrasting color. Then we do a forward pass with color B and again depending on what type of Tunisian brioche you're doing, you'll pull up those loops in different places. And then again, you're going to do your reverse pass. You're going to slide down to the end and you're going to switch colors back to color A and do your reverse pass in color A. And then you will just repeat rows two through five until you have the size of fabric that you want for whatever it is you're making. And then we finish with a bind off. You can do a slip stitch bind off. You can do a single crochet bind off. You can bind off in the vertical bars. You can, you can bind off in whatever stitch you're doing, whether it's purl stitch or reverse stitch, whatever. And then um, you can do an optional single crochet edging on the sides. Um, and I'll show that to you next. Okay, so we're going to begin with a slip stitch. Put that on the end of our hook. And we're just going to chain. I'm going to chain 10 for this example. Okay, so we have 10 chains, and you can see here on these chains we have these V's on one side, and on the back we have what's called the back bump or the back hump. Every chain has three threads, the two V's and this back bump. And so you can go into um, any of the, the three threads as long as you do it into the same one for each chain. Uh, but the nicest way to do it is to work into the back bumps. It gives you the nicest bottom edge if you do it that way. So we're going to not go into the, the first chain because this loop on our hook is counts as our first stitch. So for our next stitch we're going to go into the second chain. 
So there's one V, here's the other V. So we're going to turn it over and we're going to go into the back bump of that second chain. So we go into that back bump. I like to just make sure that this loop is pulled secure, not you know overly tight, but not loose. You're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. On forward pass of Tunisian crochet, we always build up loops on the forward pass. So we go into the next back bump and pull up a loop. And we do that all the way to the end, going into each of the back bumps. As we go along. And then when you have completed that forward pass, you should have the same number of loops on your hook that you had starting chains. So in our case, that's going to be 10. Let's double check that. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Perfect. Now in regular Tunisian crochet, what we would do <clears throat> for our reverse pass is we would start it right here. But since this is Tunisian brioche, what we're going to do instead is we're going to slide these all the way down to the other end and we're going to turn the work. Usually in regular Tunisian crochet we don't turn our work, but in brioche we do. So then we're going to take our second color, our contrasting color, and we're going to make a slip stitch in that yarn. And I'm going to put that on the end of my hook and tighten it up. Now this is a, a good place to do a, a check. If you have working yarn from one down here and working yarn from the other on the other end, you are in you're in the right the right spot. So so we just did our chain and we did our row two, which is the forward pass in the same color, color A. Now we're at row three, and we're going to, we, we, we did the slide to the opposite end, and now we're going to do reverse pass in color B. And the way that you do that is, um, reverse pass is always a, um, a yarn over and pull through one, and since we have already um, made our loop here. We're just going to pretend that that's our yarn over and pull through one. And then the rest of the reverse pass, you, just, you can just kind of hold, hold it so that that little knot stays right about there. And don't worry, it will, um, it feels a little loose in the beginning, but don't worry about that. So then we're just going to yarn over and pull through two. All right, so we had, this was one loop on our hook and this was the second, just like we have now. We have one loop, two, we're going to pull yarn over and pull through two. We're just going to keep doing that till we have only one loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two, 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 all the way to the end. And you'll notice that this loop here gets really, um, it gets kind of stretched out. So when I get to the end, what I like to do is just pull that down a little bit, even a little tighter than it should be because it's going to stretch out again, and that's okay. And for this first um, version, we're going to do the Tunisian simple stitch in the top horizontal bar. So 
in, in regular Tunisian simple stitch, we would go into these front vertical bars. But to go into the top horizontal bar, if you look at what we just created, this reverse pass, we created basically these chains. And just like our starting chain, we have three threads. We have the V's in the front, and in the back we have those, those back bumps. And we further designate these threads by calling this the top horizontal bar, and this would be the bottom horizontal bar. So for this stitch, we're going to be going into the top horizontal bar. And also, before I begin, I want to show you one other thing. When we're working regular Tunisian crochet, we go into, we always start in the second stitch because this loop on our hook already corresponds with this vertical bar here. And we work in every single, we, we start with the second one, pulling up loops, and we go all the way to the last um, edge stitch, the last vertical bar. In this version, we're working into this top horizontal bar that comes right before the vertical bar in, in each stitch. So when we get down to the end, we're not going to be working into this edge stitch because we want to maintain the same number of stitches in each row. So we want to have 10 loops on our hook at the end. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into that top horizontal bar. We're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. And we're going to do that in each top horizontal bar. And each of these horizontal bars corresponds with the vertical bar that's uh, to its left. And we go into, this is the last stitch that we go into. And now that we have all these loops on our hook, we're ready for a return pass. But since this is Tunisian brioche, we're not going to be working from this end. We want to switch our color. And to do that, we're going to, we're basically on, we just did our forward pass in color B the contrasting color. And now we're at row five, which is a reverse pass. So we're going to slide down to the end. And we're going to turn our work. And we're going to switch now to working our reverse pass in color A. So to work the reverse pass in color A, I'm just going to pick up that yarn. And what I want to do is I want to maintain the right height. So I don't want to squish that stitch really tight because otherwise our edge will be contracted. It'll be too tight. So make sure that that yarn maintains the right height. And then we yarn over and pull through one. Just like a regular return pass in regular Tunisian crochet. And then we yarn over and pull through two all the way back to the end. Yarn over, pull through two. And again, 
our end stitch has gotten loosened up, so we're going to tighten that back down. And now we're ready to begin a forward pass. And our forward pass is always going to be in the same color as whatever our last reverse pass was. So we are back to color A. Well, we just finished a reverse pass in color A, and now we're doing a forward pass in color A. And again, we're working into the top horizontal bar. So this is our first stitch that we work into, so we're going to work into this horizontal bar here. I'm going to go into that horizontal bar, and a little trick that I like to do is once I've gotten my hook in there, I like to just pull this loop snug so that it doesn't get um, too loosened. And then I pull up my next, my, my first, sorry, my second loop on my hook. And we're just going to work into all of those stitches all the way across. a little thread there and then try not to miss make sure you don't miss this last one because sometimes that last one can get a little tight so we're going to go into that last one yarn over pull up a loop and you can always check by doing a stitch count so we should have 10 2 4 6 8 10 10 stitches, perfect. So we just finished a forward pass. It's time to slide on down and do a reverse pass in the other color. So we slide it down. We're going to turn it, turn our work. And then we're going to do, we're going to pick up the contrasting color, color B. And Remember to keep that height. So we're going to yarn over and pull through one. And then yarn over, pull through two, all the way back. And just like before, I like to Make sure that this loop gets pulled snug before I begin the next row. It, it might loosen up again. And now we do a forward pass in the same color. And you're just going to work that way. Until you um, have the size that you like. And um, if I didn't already mention this, when you begin your, your starting chain, you can start with any number of chains that you like. It doesn't matter if it's an odd number or an even number. And here we go. Again, we don't wanna, we wanna make sure that we get that last one. And we can double check our stitch count, two, four, six, eight, ten. And then we're going to turn. And if you always turn back and forth the opposite way, then your yarn won't get um, tangled. So we're going to do a reverse pass in the other color. Yarn over, pull through one, and yarn over, pull through two, all the way back. And now I'm going to show you how to bind this off. And if you want to make yours a little bigger, before you do the bind off, just hit the pause button. So for the bind off, you can do the bind off in many different ways. You can bind off in the exact same place that you um, 
were doing your stitches before or you can bind off using the front vertical bars. Um, I'm going to bind off using the front vertical bars because that's in a way sort of how we started down here by pulling up the, um, the loops in the back bumps of the original chain. So I'm going to take my hook. I'm not going to change the yarn, although you could, if you wanted to, you could, um, you could pick up the gray color and bind off in gray if you wanted to by just tightening that there and do your bind off in gray or you could bind it off in the pink whichever one you prefer. So since I've done this let's go ahead and do that. So this is our first vertical bar. I'm going to bind off in the vertical bars so I'm going to go under that first vertical bar, yarn over, oops, I'm supposed to yarn over with the, with the gray. I'm going to yarn over. Actually, before I do that, I want to tighten this first loop. Okay, so where was I? Okay, yeah. So I went into the, the front vertical bar, I'm going to yarn over, pull up a loop. I have two loops on my hook and now I'm going to pull, I'm going to slip stitch one through the other. So we go into the next vertical bar, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then slip stitch. I'm just going to do that all the way down. And when you're doing your bind off, you can take this end off so you don't have that noisy other end flopping around. And then when we get to the end, this is our last vertical bar. It just kind of got pulled down a little bit. I'm going to go under that one and also under this pink one. Yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull it through the loop on the hook. And then we can just chain one, cut the yarn, and your piece will be done. So that's the Tunisian brioche using the top horizontal bar. It's one side and that's the other side. Okay, so now let's do a Tunisian brioche using the full stitch. And again, this is what your fabric will look like after you've done that. So we just start the exact same way. We're going to make a slip stitch and we are going to chain any number. The, the formula is basically the same. It's just where you're picking up your loops that will, will differ. So I'm going to do 10 again. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we're going to work into the second back bump. And make sure that first loop is snug. Yarn over, pull up a loop, and I'm going to do that into the back bump of each of the chains all the way to the end. And the last one there. I'm going to reattach my the other end of my hook. And now it is, so we just did the row two. Forward pass, pulling up loops in color A. Now we're going to slide to the opposite end. And 
return the work. And we're going to make a slip knot in our contrasting color. I'm going to put it on the hook, tighten it up. And that's counting as my yarn over, so yarn over and pull through one for the reverse pass, and then yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And then just yarn over, pull through two all the way to the end. And I'm going to tighten up this loop. I think I missed one there. No, no I didn't. Okay, so I'm just going to tighten up that vertical bar there. Now, since this one is going to be a full stitch version as opposed to the last one which was into the top horizontal bar, full stitch is even easier. For full stitch what we do is we go into the space in between the vertical bars. So right in there. So we go in the front and all the way through the back. We yarn over and pull up a loop. Go in between those vertical bars, yarn over and pull up a loop. And the vertical bars, you have a front vertical bar and you have this back vertical bar. So we're not going in between the vertical bars. That's the knit stitch. We are going in between, we're going in the spaces that are between the, the full vertical loops. So we go into that space, yarn over, pull up a loop. We go into the space, yarn over, pull up a loop into the space, yarn over, pull up a loop, and just make sure that these are not too tight. Pull up a loop, pull up a loop, all the way to the last space between the last two vertical bars. One of the nice things about Tunisian brioche is because you're using two different colors, it, it makes it easier to see uh, where you are on that last stitch. So we just finished a forward pass, and now it's time to do a reverse pass. Every time we do a reverse pass, we are sliding down and turning our work. So now we're ready to begin our reverse pass. We pick up color A, yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two, all the way back. I'm going to snug up that, that end stitch there. And now when our when both of our tails are at the same end, both of our working working yarn is at the same end, we continue with the same color. So we're going to work our full stitch again. Again, we're going in between the pairs of vertical bars. So we go right into that space there, yarn over, pull up a loop, go into the next one, yarn over, pull up a loop, go into the next one, yarn over, pull up a loop, and you can really see it where I've gone into when I pull those loops up high. Go all the way to the end. Make sure you get this last stitch. Go into the space between those two sets of vertical bars. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And now <clears throat> 
our tails are at opposite ends, so it's time to slide down to do our reverse pass, and we're going to turn the work. We're going to pick up our gray color now. And again, I'm going to pull that loop so it's the same height as all the others before I start. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull through one, and yarn over, pull through two, all the way back. So go all the way back. And I'm going to pull that loop down a little bit. Now we're ready for another forward pass. And again, our tails, our working, working yarn is, are both at the same end. So it's time to continue in that same color as the reverse pass. And we're just going to do those full stitches again all the way down. So go ahead and do a few more of these rows. I'm going to do a few more of these rows. And when you are when I have a few more, I'm going to show you how to do the bind off row. I just want to show you one more time when you managing these, these edge stitches so they don't get too tight or too loose. Um, I always like to pull this one down kind of extra tight because I know it's going to loosen up again as I go across. Um, because sometimes this one gets loosened up as well. So if I pull this one a little tight, it's going to make sure that this one doesn't get loosened up. And then um, when I go into the very first stitch that I'm going to make, I pull up that loop. Um, actually, before I pull up that loop, I'm going to, I tighten this loop that's on my hook. And then, um, and then continue on. And the reason for that is you want to make sure that this end loop doesn't get too big because otherwise your edges will be a little wonky. So just continue going along and I'll meet you back here for showing you how to do the bind off. Okay, I just completed a reverse pass and you always do your bind off after a reverse pass. So, and like I showed you in the first swatch, you can, um, you can bind off in any color you like. So I'm gonna remove my end because I don't need that. Um, this time I'm just going to bind off in the yarn that I'm, I'm at. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to bind off again in the front vertical bars. Um, let me just show you actually if you wanted to do it in the in the same stitch you would just go into the stitch like you were doing a full stitch or if it was the top horizontal bar you would just make your your loop in whatever stitch that is you want to make it into. Um, and then you do a slip stitch. So you could do that all the way across. Um, but I think it's going to look neater if you use most of the time the, these front vertical bars for doing your bind off. So as I mentioned before, we don't go into the first vertical bar because that corresponds with the, the loop that's already on our hook. So we go into the second one, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then we slip stitch that with the stitch, with the loop that's already on our hook. We go under the next vertical bar, go under the next vertical bar, yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull that loop through the loop that's on your hook. You're just going to do that all the way across. Slip stitching. I 
as you go. And then uh, chain one and you can cut your yarn. So let's compare those two side by side. So this one is with full stitch and this one is using the top horizontal bar. If we flip them over, you can see this one is less dense and this one is much thicker. And this one you kind of have to stretch it out to see the sneak peek and here you can you can see it more eat more readily. So now I'm going to show you how to do this version of Tunisian brioche using the knit stitch. So I've done my 10 chains and I've pulled up my 10 loops and now I'm going to do and now we're going to do the reverse pass so we're going to slide down turn our work and I'm going to make a slip knot Put that on the end of our hook and we're going to work our reverse pass just like we did with all with the other swatches. So this counts as like our our yarn over. So it's the yarn over pull through one. Then it's yarn over pull through two all the way back to the beginning. Okay, and just like all the others, we're going to continue with our color B for our forward pass, except now we're going to be working knit stitch. And the way that you work a knit stitch is you're going to go in between the front vertical bar and the back vertical bar. And that goes all the way through to the back. We yarn over and pull up a loop. And you do that all the way across. Go in between the front vertical bar and the back vertical bar. So it's, it's going to have a similar look to the full stitch one, um, but it's, we're going into a different space. The full stitch went in here in between the sets and with the knit stitch we're actually going in between those the the front vertical bar and the back vertical bar all the way to the back yarning over and pulling up a loop all the way to the end and of course when we get to the end it's going to be a little different in that we are going to work an edge stitch um, and so what we want to do there is we want to go under this front vertical bar and the tail from the last row. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And then we're going to do the slide. Slide down, turn our work, and we're going to work our reverse pass in color A. <clears throat> so I'm going to make sure that that loop there is not loosened out too much. You don't want it you don't want it too tight. You just want it the same size as all the others. So then I'm going to yarn over pull through one, yarn over pull through two, yarn over pull through two all the way back, yarn over pull through two. Going to tighten this up again. Yarn over, pull through two. Okay. 
So now we're going to knit stitch all the way back. This guy got a little bit too tightened, so let's loosen that up again. There we go. So we're going to go in between the front and the back vertical bar, yarn over, pull up a loop. You can see there's the front, there's the front vertical bar and there's the back. So we go right in between those two. Yarn over, pull up a loop all the way down to the end. And so you're just going to continue in the same way that we did the others. Um, after your reverse pass, you, oh, you come back with a forward pass in the same color. So here we are at the edge stitch. And whenever you go into an edge stitch, you're going underneath two threads. And it's in the, when you're working with two colors, you're going to end up going under one of each. Yarn over, pull up a loop. And now it's time to slide it down. Turn our work the other way. If you keep alternating the way that you turn, you'll never, your yarn won't get uh, crossed up. And then we do our reverse pass. We change yarn, yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two, all the way back. So go ahead and continue with this same formula. Um, and before I do that, I'll just show you real quick that if you wanted to do this um, in any other stitch, you would just work the stitch, whatever stitch that is you're going to use. If you're using Tunisian Simple Stitch, you'll work into the front vertical bars like this. If you are working reverse stitch, you're going to work into the back vertical bars of each stitch as you pull up the loops. If you are doing purl stitch, you're going to pull the yarn to the front and work your purl stitches. Like so, all the way to the end. And basically when you get to the end, no matter what stitch you're doing, you're always going to do your edge stitch the same, which is to go under two threads. Um, one will be of one color and the other thread will be of the other color. Okay, so here's our edge stitch. We've got a front vertical bar and a back vertical bar and then this thread from our, um, from the contrasting color. We go under those two, yarn over and pull up a loop. And you can always just check, you can always just count in my example, I'm always using 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Okay, and now it's time to slide and do a reverse pass. So go ahead and continue with that on your own for your little swatch, and then I'll show you how we bind off, which is basically the same as before. Okay, so I just finished a reverse pass, and that's when you would do a bind off row. And like we showed before, you can bind off in either color. I'm going to bind off in the color that I'm on and I'm just going to, um, generally speaking, I like to bind off just with the, uh, with a Tunisian simple stitch. So that's, we just go into the front vertical bar, yarn over, pull up a loop and then oops, slip stitch it through the loop that's on your hook. Go under the next vertical bar, yarn over and pull up a loop slip stitch it through the loop on your hook and just do that all the way down to the end and then I'm going to show you um, how you can do a an edging on the sides if you would like 
and for the edge stitch we go under two threads just like every other edge, edge stitch all right so so that's our knit stitch and you, we can compare it to the full stitch um, you know they look nearly identical upon first examination um, the only time they look different is when if you, you kind of pull them apart the stitches are slightly different it might even be difficult for you to see it on the film so depending on which stitch you like using better um, and the edge is a, is a little different on them as well so but for any of the of, of the Tunisian brioche if you would like to make a um, a single crochet edging on the side edges what you would do is you would chain one and then you're just going to go under two threads and create a single crochet all the way along when you've worked um, the a kind of stitch that goes into the um, the vertical bars you're going to have the two colors on your edge stitches and if you are working into um, a piece that was work that was not working into vertical bars such as the uh, the full stitch or the horizontal bar you're going to be working your your edge stitches are going to be the same color so you're going to work into that one and then you're going to work into these two and then these two and then oops, these two all along the edge for your single crochet edging when I do the single crochet edging I usually do one side in one color and then I do the other side in the other color and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use Tunisian brioche uh, to make a couple of different items so um, this is where the video will go to the second part or whatever the next part is and the link will be in the description below for where to um, go to the next piece we're going to be learning we're going to be learning how to make all these different goodies the um, the thumb version of the mitts the simple version of mitts the cowl and the reversible hat with the pom pom, as well as um, a lantern cover as well. So, meet me over there. Give the video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, and then meet me at the next video. Mm -hmm.